Ow. The M4 Mac Mini SSD replacement. I was going for a really dramatic opening because I feel like this is momentous. I mean, it shouldn't be. All I'm doing is upgrading the SSD here inside the Mac Mini. Like, it's just this little chip you plug in. This is what the drive inside your Mac Mini looks like. Well, this is the two terabyte replacement for the drive that's in mine. I found a website that makes these little fully prepared SSDs that can just plug right in inside here. The number printed on the sides of the actual little memory module comes up as SanDisk. I talked to someone at the website that sells these and they did say that it's almost Chinese New Year over there. So things may be slow to manufacture over the next few weeks if you're watching this video right when it comes out. They're available right now. And if this works, it means that for 300 bucks, you can turn a $600 computer into a $1,400 computer. Here's how to do it. Start by backing up your Mac Mini. I've got this super fast backup drive from Oracle. Is this, it has like the same little bottom, it's the same size and shape. So it just sits on your Mac Mini and it's got this tiny little tail, but importantly, it plugs in. It's got a Thunderbolt interface, so it's a super fast drive. Maybe it should be like this. You won't really be able to do anything with your existing Mac Mini SSD after you get it out of here, other than keep it in case something goes wrong with this new one. Apple has a proprietary slot, so this is not the same size as an M.2. It's really close though. So you won't be able to use this in like an external drive enclosure. Next, go to ipsw.me forward slash Mac 16 comma 10. I'll put a link below. And download the newest firmware for the M4 Mac mini. It's a 16 gigabyte file and you're gonna have to have this file available on a different Mac. Well, you can't see that on a different Mac because we're gonna take the drive out of this and you won't be able to get to it. Also, basically we're gonna be restoring and setting this up as a brand new computer. So it's probably best to sign out of your Apple ID so that the find my thing doesn't get stuck and freak out. Now, we've got to get into this thing. I have a new top down camera. Luckily, the kit that I got from that shop sent a bunch of little tools, including a suction cup. I've seen a few other Mac mini teardowns and nobody has used this method. If they don't send you tools with it, I'm not sure if they're gonna keep doing that. I have this handy dandy iFixit kit with all the right screwdriver sizes. Get that stuck on there. And then on the opposite side from the power button, I'm gonna sorta, with the help of a suction cup, you can use the suction cup to sorta pull up on the case and that'll help get a tool in there. There's a ribbon cable connected to that power button and so we're gonna kinda Keep that connected and just tip this, oops. There we go. Just gonna fold that over. See, there's a little connector there. I'm gonna keep that in place. Once you get in here, there are eight T5 screws around the edge to take off. You can keep the ones in the middle on there. I had read this was T4 and that is definitely too small. That should be all of those. Then we're just gonna give this a wiggle and that will come off actually pretty easily. Okay, so the power cable is connected on the corner there and there's a ribbon connected to the fan assembly. So we'll just kinda Stand that up and out of the way. So we're not trying to do a full tear down here. On this next layer, you can see in there, yeah, you can. On this next layer, there are two screws here and here, and then two tiny screws here and here. These ones are T5. These ones I think are T3. So let's get those off. So the ones that are actually on the, I don't know what that is, heat spreader, air diverter, are T3. Then the fan will just pull off. That's got its own ribbon going the other direction. Just be real careful with it. And we have revealed the Mac mini SSD. This is a bigger boy. This is a T8 screw. But just give this thing a little wiggle and it comes out. Apple SSD replacement SSD. The notch for this SSD is actually right where this little tiny arrow is. Sneak that down in there. Plug it on in and we'll just work backwards. Then you just flip the fan back over. That'll land right where it needs to go. Super tiny fan screws. T3, T3. Those are back to the T5. That flips over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where's the eighth screw? Oh, almost left that out. Then the bottom plate has these little pegs that just, if you put it in the right spot, they go back into their holes and they will snap in. Better than new. 
Bottom plate snapped back on and we are just one system restore away. So this new drive is completely bare and Apple computers need to like hardware pair themselves to the drives. So we have to put an Apple firmware onto this SSD in order to be able to put Mac OS onto this SSD. To boot your Mac mini into the device firmware update mode, first plug in an HDMI cord that's plugged into a monitor, then hold the power button before plugging in the power cable and plug in the power cable. Keep holding the power button. You're gonna keep holding this power button until this light starts to blink yellow. I'm gonna call that orange. It's blinking orange. Now you can plug in a Thunderbolt cable from one of this Mac's Thunderbolt ports to a different Mac's Thunderbolt port. It's gonna ask you if you wanna allow this accessory to connect. I do want that. Poof, this thing pops up with Mac DFU mode. It's asking if I wanna revive the Mac or restore the Mac. Click restore the Mac. Yes, I wanna restore an update. Oh. It's not even asking me to use that firmware. If it doesn't just automatically start like this, you're gonna have to navigate to the firmware you downloaded from the IPSW, IPSW? From the IPSW website. But I guess mine just has it built in. I don't know, it's, it's happening now. That whole process takes about 20 minutes. And then I'm just gonna restore this whole computer to its previous form from the backup. Once you see the Apple logo, you're pretty close. The connected Mac has been restored to factory settings. Please disconnect the restored Mac from this Mac. Done, it's done. That whole process took about 20 minutes. Now I'm gonna just take that cord out. This computer's just gonna start back up. And if everything worked the way I expect, I'm just gonna go through and restore this computer from this backup I made so that it's like nothing ever happened. That's gonna take another bit of time, so I'll see you in a minute. I haven't restored from a Mac backup in a pretty long time, but it is so specific that it's like still the web page that I was on before I started, and like the pages files of me writing about my top-down camera are still open. That's that's amazing. You should note that right when you restore a Mac, it's gonna have to re-index the drive. Yeah, you can see that it's indexing. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but you can see that it's indexing, which means it's heavily using your hard drive for a little while. It's also importing apparently 50,000 emails. But if you're gonna do like disk speed tests to see how, we, how well this new disk is doing, it's busy. So it's gonna be slower than it actually is. But if we check out my Macintosh hard drive, I see 1.85 terabytes available on an M4 Mac mini that I bought with 256 gigs for 600 bucks. I did a disk speed test of the original drive and came up with between two and two and a half gigabytes per second read and write speeds. Let's just try it. Let's just try it for fun. Look at that. Even though the drive is busy, can I zoom in? We're getting 4,400 megabytes per second, 3,000 megabytes per second. So four gigs per second on this new drive. So it can write four gigs per second and four and a half gigabytes per second on this new drive. Not only is it way bigger, but it's way faster than Apple's original drive that came with this Mac mini. And that's with the hard drive being busy indexing and doing getting my mail. I've got links to the tools I use to do this and links to the website I got the drives from. They have a one terabyte version also that's even cheaper. I'll also put a link to this little Oracle backup drive because it is so fast. My whole restore from backup took like 15 minutes because this is Thunderbolt 4. Links to everything down below and please subscribe to my channel. I love watching that number get bigger. My name is Nicholas Johnson. Goodbye. Ow.